Hello everybody. Welcome to my class on definite integral. Today you will be learning how to find areas, volumes of various shape using definite integration in calculus. This is an extension of the indefinite integrals you have been using up to now. So firstly, you will learn a general technique before going on to see as to how the technique on definite integration have been developed and to apply in real world situation. So we have been following this book and this book is uh, written by Sue Pemberton and series editor is Julian Gilbey. So uh, today uh, we are going to discuss on uh, definite integration first of all, and then we'll see about area under a curve, then improper integrals. And lastly, we'll talk about uh, volume of revolution. So we shall now discuss about what is definite integration. This is also called definite integrals. So in, our, in order to deal with definite integration, you should have some knowledge of indefinite integrals first of all. So in, in the indefinite integrals, what we had done actually, it, it was x to the power n dx where uh, xn is function of x for example and in that case it was x n plus 1 by n plus 1 plus constant term and uh, derivative and uh, in, uh, differ uh, differentiation is also called derivative and integration is also called antiderivative that means as antiderivative of x to the power n dx is x n plus 1 by n uh, plus 1 plus a constant term. So when you take differentiation of this term, the function must be, your answer must be x n. So let's check it. So we are taking differentiation of x n plus 1 by n plus 1 and plus constant equals to 1 by n plus 1 because n plus 1 is constant so we take it out common and then this is d x n plus 1 over dx and plus d c by dx and this is 1 by n plus 1 times use formula for in the uh, in the differentiation that n x n minus 1 and in that case it is n means it is n plus 1 in this case you can see the power of n so d x n by dx equals to you know that this is n x n minus 1 so it is in place of n there is n plus 1 so x n plus 1 minus 1 and then that's done and plus derivative of constant is always 0 so these two terms have been cancelled out and plus 1 minus 1 also cancel out Therefore, you are left with x n. Okay, so if antiderivative of x n is x n plus one by n plus one, then derivative of uh, plus constant. So the derivative of this term must be x to the power n. So let's now discuss uh, how to find the definite integral of the given function. All right. So before going into details of the theory first of all we'll discuss about technique to calculate the definite integrals so in this case let's 
take up one example so you can say this is 2 to 3 and x to the power 3 dx and then you know the integration of xq is if you apply x n plus 1 by n plus 1 it's going to be x to the power 4 by 4 and then there should be constant term all right and then you take this value 2 and 2 3 so here 3 is called upper limit and 2 is called lower limit all right so we put uh, this limits until we complete substituting these values in the given integration so here in this case uh, after taking the integration so first of all uh, we put in place of x3 so this is uh, 3 to the power 4 by 4 and there is a constant term so there is nothing to put for that and then in between upper and lower limit you put the sign minus and then now this lower limit is 2 so you put this value 2 so 2 to the power 4 by 4 and plus c and now you open this bracket so it is 3 to the power 4 over 4 plus c minus 2 to the power 4 over 4 and minus times plus is minus c and you see that in the definite integral case constant term constant terms get cancelled out so therefore there is no need of writing constant term while dealing with the problems about definite integrals all right so it is 3 to the power 4 over 4 and minus 2 to the power 4 over 4 so in this case it is uh, 81 by 4 and then this is 16 by 4 so if you deduct 81 and 16 it's going to be 65 by 4 so this is the answer okay so therefore in general you can write integration of any function between the lower limit a and upper limit b of xn then your formula will be like this x n plus 1 by n plus 1 and from lower limit to upper limit after taking the integration of this function so we keep on writing uh, this a and b these limits up uh, until we uh, put this value back to this integrated function but it should not be minus 1 because if you take integration of x to the power minus 1 then in that case you can see that x to the power minus 1 plus 1 and this is minus 1 plus 1 and limit from 3 to 9 for example so it is x to the power 0 by 0 uh, 3 to 9 and then it is 1 to the power 0 that means it is undefined all right so make sure that so to understand that n can be any number but it cannot be minus 1 okay guys you may now pause here and try these sums as your classwork these are the answers here now we'll discuss about area under a curve under a curve means any function if it is given like y equal to fx and this uh, suppose that this is a graph of any kind of curve here and uh, x belongs to r and uh, the range that is uh, value of r depends on the domain of the function and the type of this function all right so here we are going to find area under a curve area under a curve means this is a curve and we take some part of the curve under which we have to find the area between two values of x you can say x equals to a and x equals to b 
so in uh, general we can also calculate by using the graphical method but that graphical method is usually tedious so calculus method is most appropriate and accurate method of finding area between non geometrical shape like this all right so here in this case we, what you can do actually between x equals to a and x equal to b we can divide uh, we can we shall try to make uh, consider some rectangle maybe 11 12 13 14 and 15 16 maybe 100 rectangles so in order, in order to make it visible i am taking here only few rectangles here so you can see that although although we are saying the rectangle but this sort of area is missing out in the integration even though if you add all these rectangles okay so general theory is that when you add area of all these rectangles that means gives you the area under the curve in between x equals to a and x equals to b where you can say that a has lower limit and b has upper limit in this case so the for example if you consider that to that to be a rectangle then area of this rectangle is height you can see this is y1 and its width is delta x we write delta x all right delta x means it's a very small width all right uh, and then similarly the area of another rectangle is height is y2 and its width is delta x so we keep the rectangles of width equal but heights are different practically here and similarly you can find the area of each rectangle that how many rectangles we have considered over here but in this case what you can consider actually while taking the area of, uh, of this rectangle although you add area of this rectangle you will get the area between a and b but you will have some error that uh, some area that will not be covered entirely so here you can see that this is the extra area that we have not covered while adding area of this rectangle all right and similar thing happens here here and in I, almost all rectangles okay here in this case so what you can consider here that first of all we say that the total area under the curve between the line x equals to a and x equals to b is area means we add up all area of each rectangle then it is y1 dx plus y2 dx plus dot dot up to 13th rectangle if you have drawn then you can write y1 1 3 dx and in general if you have drawn n rectangles you can write yn dx so that that is supposed to give area of this total rectangles but what happens when you take delta x tends to 0 that means uh, as delta x tends to 0 you can consider a very large number of rectangles over there that means when delta x is narrowed down then what happens for example here this line will get overlap over another line and then you will consider that when delta is extremely small in that case it will give you the perfect rectangle over here for example all right a similar thing between these two rectangles uh, you can consider like if delta x gap is very small then as if they would like they, they have coincided to each other and if there is very large number of rectangles with no gapping in between the curve and this rectangle then you can say that there are so many rectangles where delta x tends to 0 then it gives you the integrated area under the curve between x equals to a and x equals to b so therefore we can say that when delta x tends to 0 each incomplete rectangle becomes or tends to a complete rectangle and therefore as delta x tends to 0 you can write in general the height of uh, each rectangle height of rectangle is y x and the width of rectangle is delta x in general so summation of this you can take it here and as delta x tends to 0 then area will be given by the integration of the given function y equal to fx in between um, the lo lower limit uh, x equals to a and upper limit of x equals to b now when you get this integration well, how do you find the area so first of all you integrate you, you took the area 
below x equals to a then area below x equals x equals to b then area below x equals to a so area when you deduct area below x equals to b area below x equals to a from area below x equals to b then you will have this area of this shaded region all right so therefore first we take the value upper limit that is below b this is the upper limit and then we take the value lower limit after the function is being integrated let's apply that how the area under curve can be found out here so let's consider an example like this this example states that consider the area bounded by the curve y equal to x square the x axis and the lines x equals to 2 and x equals to 5 so you have to find this shaded regions area so what you can do actually we integrate this function y equal to x square between x equals to 2 and x equals to 5 so we apply this general rule to integrate the function and after that when you integrate the function you know that area below x equals to 5 that is the upper limit and minus area below x equals to 2 that is the lower limit so we deduct these areas so that means when it uh, x is 5 then you put 5 here so 5 q by 3 minus 2 then it is uh, 2 q by 3 all right so after calculation the area is 39 square units let's do an another example so you have to find a equals to what when y equal to minus x square so this is the part of the curve y equals to minus x square between the lines x equal to 2 and x equals to 5 so let's try it so area is given by the value a to b and then this is you can write y dx or fx dx and then in place of a you can see this is 2 and in place of 5 uh, in place of b you can see this is 5 and y equals to minus x square is over here and dx take this minus sign outside and then this is x square dx 2 to 5 and take the integration of this function now so integration of this function is this is x square so this is x cube by 3 okay and as this is x cube by 3 and then lower limit is 2 and upper limit is 5 so it is minus 5 cube by 3 minus 2 cube by so we are putting 2 in place of x so 2 cube by 3 over here so after calculating this we will find it is minus it is 125 by 3 and this is 2 to the 4 to the 8 by 3 and then if you deduct uh, 8 from 125 it's going to be 117 by 3 and finally it is minus 39 all right but note that area cannot be negative okay so area is always taken as positive mathematically so therefore what you have to do when you get the value of area that happens usually below x axis then you have to take the absolute value of this value of the area that you obtain through the integration method so therefore the area in this case is absolute value of a that is absolute value of 39 so area is in fact it is 39 square unit all right so this sort of uh, concept can be applied here like upside this x-axis the area is positive and towards the uh, downward of this x-axis the area mathematically in, in your calculation you will get this is negative but area cannot be negative therefore you have to take the absolute value of this area so let's this uh, let's do this problem first of all so here you can see that this example is test that for the curve below and this equation is y equals to x x minus 2 x minus 6 and when you expand it it is x cube minus 8x square plus 12x so find the total area of the shaded region that means you have to find the area of this curve 
under the value of x you can see it is x equals to 0 and here x equals to 2 and then in another another time you have to find area between under the curve between x equals to 2 and x, x equal to 6 and finally you have to add this area in order to get the total area uh, total area of this set region so let's mm, do the integration first of all so here in this case the area is so we call the integration we will take here so in the integration of uh, the function here it is x x minus 2 x minus 6 dx and when you expand it it will be <coughs> x cube minus 8x square plus 12x dx and then integration of x cube is it is x to the power 4 by 4 minus 8 times x to the integration of x square is x to the power 3 by 3 plus 12 integration of x is times x squared by 2 all right and you don't need to write constant here because you have uh, seen in the beginning that uh, the constant terms get cancelled out so you don't need to write here because we are taking only the integration in this case and then we'll put the value of x for the given shaded region so we divide this into two areas you can say this is a1 and you can say this is a2 so if i am writing a1 then a1 has integration between 0 to 2 so you can write here uh, x4 by 4 minus 8 x cube by 3 plus 2 under 2 6 just so this is 6x square and then you can write here lower limit as 0 and upper limit as 2 if, as if we are talking of this set region in yellow color all right and now we do the same process so first you put the upper values uh, for x and then you put the lower values for x so why, when you put upper value of x then better use this sort of bracket and then this is 2 so 0 to 2 means 2 we are putting uh, putting for x so here it is 2 to the power 4 by 4 minus 8 times of 2 cube by 3 plus 6 times of 2 a square minus here in this case you can see all the terms are becoming 0 as lower limit is 0 so you can write 0 minus 0 plus 0 and then take a calculator so once you calculate this value in the calculator it will be 20 by 3 so here the area is already positive and if you'd like to find a2 for example so a2 means area of this area this shaded region so a, a2 you have to you can use the same integration here this is x to the power 4 by 4 minus 8x cube by 3 plus 6x square but in this case uh, the range of value of x have been changed here from 2 to 6 so it's from 2 to 6 2 to 6 so we do the same procedure now 3 but you know that the area cannot be negative so therefore we take the absolute value of this second set of regions area so therefore the total area you can write this is a1 plus absolute value of a2 why absolute value of a2 because this is negative negative number so it is a1 is now 20 by 3 and then plus a2 is negative 128 by 3 so finally it is 20 by 3 plus 128 by 3 so 20 and 128 is 148 by 3 you can leave your answer in exact form like this or you can write that means it is 49 whole 1 by 3 so this is also in the exact answer form or sometimes uh, it will be asked you to write 
connect to the three significant figure or these many decimal places you can do so also just convert that into decimal then it will be 49.3 square unit so in the previous example we have found area of the cell region under given values of x between x axis okay but here we find the area under the curve for given y equals to 1 2 3 but and also uh, between the y axis in this case instead of you write area uh, area equals to different integral from a to b of fx dx that is y dx the things have been reversed here so instead of y, d, uh, y dx we have to integrate x with respect to dy so you can see uh, that the diagram shows the curve y equal to under root 2x plus 1 so it is given in terms of y equal to fx but we have to convert that in term of x equals to fy okay and the diagram shows the curve y equal to under root 2x plus 1 the serial region is bounded by the curve the y axis not the x axis in this case and the line y equals to 3 find the area of this shaded region so in order to do so uh, we take this exam this function actually so area in this case is not fx dx but it is fy dy that is x dy and between the range of value of y from 1 to 3 so we have to convert this into in terms of uh, x equals to fy so here it is y equals to under root 2x plus 1 so if you square both sides then it is going to be y square equals to 2x plus 1 so it is 2x equals to y square and take this to the left then it is minus 1 and therefore in place of x we have to write this is y squared minus 1 by 2 or you can write half times of y squared minus 1 okay so 1 to 3 your function is x is now it is 1 by 2 y squared minus 1 dy not dx at this time now so it is half is constant so take it out and then it is integration of y y square with, with respect to y is now it is y q by 3 and integration of 1 with respect to y is y okay and the lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is 3 equals to 1 by 2 now put this upper limit value for this variable y so it is 3 to the power 3 by 3 minus 3 and then another time in between lower and upper limit uh, value substitution there is uh, there is sign minus and then you start again this bracket curly bracket now we are working for y equals to 1 so it is 1 q by 3 minus in place of y again 1 now this is the turn to calculate this value this is 1 by 2 and you can see that this is uh, 3q and there is 3 so 1 3 has been cancelled out and here 2 is left so it is 9 minus 3 and it is 9 9 minus 3 and this is 1 by 3 minus 1 then calculate it further it is half and then this is 6 minus uh, it is uh, 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 minus 1 you can see here this is 3 is LCM so it is 1 minus 3 so it is minus 2 by 3 and minus time minus will become plus so this is plus 2 by 3 and then it is 1 by 2 and then times it is 6 3 is 18 plus 2 is 20 and then this is uh, 20 by 3 so 2 ones are 2 tens are here so it is now 10 by 3 a square unit you can say answer a square unit also you can write 3 3 is 9 so this is 1 by 3 a square units 
so these are these are the exact answers but if you like you can also find it like three times of 3.3 again three you can write square units if you are rounded rounded off this number correct to three significant figure pause it here and now try the following problems now this is uh, also possible to find area bounded by a curve in the line or by two curves so in this case i am dealing with area between this curve which is 10 plus 9x minus x squared and the line of which i think we have to find the equation of this is tangent to at this point and this shared region is the area between these two curves and by using the integration method definite integration method we have to find this area all right so here we are dealing with the area between the curve and line and this is also possible to calculate the area between two curves so in this case you can see the diagram shows the curve y equal to 10 plus 9x minus x square 0.628 that is the point p has coordinate 6 and 28 and q has coordinate 10 and 0 so x value is 10 here right lie on the curve the tangent at p intersects the x axis at r that means this is also on the x axis okay so that when we know the equation of this line we will be able to find coordinate of r the tangent at p intersects the x axis at r first find the equation of the tangent to the curve at p and then find the area of the shaded region that means you have to find area of this uh, shaded region in green color so in order to do so so our equation in this case is you can see it is uh, y equals to 10 plus 9x minus x square and then we find dy by dx of this function so this is d by dx of 10 plus 9x minus x square this we have been doing because in order to find equation of this line you have to have the value of this gradient okay so therefore you have to find the slope of this you have to find we have to you have to first differentiate this function with respect to x so when you differentiate that it's going to be differentiation of constant term the 10 is constant so differentiation of this term is 0 okay and then differentiation of 9 x so x has differentiation 9 uh, x has differentiation 1 so times 1 and minus differentiation of x squared is 2x so finally our differentiation is 9 minus 2x now you can see here that you have to find gradient of this line at point 6 28 that is at that is at x equals to 6 so you can say when x equals to 6 in that case you can say that slope of that line m instead of dy dx so you can write also dy by dx equals to 9 minus 2 times of 6 because x equals to 6 in this case okay so the gradient of the curve is 9 minus 12 and that is 9 minus 12 is minus 3 because negative number is bigger here so we have got the value of slope and the point is you can see here the point is p68 so this line has gradient now minus 3 and it passes through point 
628. So the point is P628 about which the gradient about which the line passes through. Therefore, the equation of the line which is tangent at, the, at this point P628. So that is in fact tangent is given by you know the formula y minus y1 in coordinate geometry and this is mx minus x1 and then you can put this value y1 as 28 and m value is minus 3 and then this is x minus x1 is 6. You can leave the answer as it is but it looks better if you simplify it further. So it is y equals to it is just to open this bracket means you apply the distributive law so it is 3 minus 3 times of x and minus time minus is plus so and this is 18 and it is minus 28 if you transpose this to the right it's going to be plus 28 okay so when it is plus 28 so therefore your equation of line is y equals to minus 3x plus 8 plus 8 is 16 and 1 plus 2 is 3 and plus 1 is over here this is 46 so this is the equation of tangent okay now your question states that find the area of the shaded region that means area of this region so how do you get the area of this shaded region that means what you have to do in this case just think it off <coughs> so what you can do here like consider one perpendicular from here and this point will be x equals to 6 okay so you integrate this line under between x axis and under the value of x from 6 to oh sorry you have to find the coordinate value for this r so r has coordinate how do you find the value of coordinate of r so you can see that r is on x axis so y value is 0 over here so you can say that uh, in second on x axis y value y coordinate is 0 always so therefore using this equation you can find that is uh, 0 equals to minus 3x plus 46 and then it is take this to the left it is 3x plus 3x and then that is 46 so this value is x equals to 46 by 3 so coordinate of this point is 46 by 3 and 0 so what you can do actually you integrate the equation of line on uh, under x axis with value of x from 6 to 46 by 3 so equation of the line is we have now it is uh, y equals to 3x minus 3x plus 46 but in question number b we need to find area of area of the curve we need to find area of the shaded region area of the shaded region this shaded region and it will be given by area under the line y equals to minus 3x plus 46 between between x equals to you can see here x equals to 6 and 46 by 3 6 and x equals to 46 by 3 minus 
area under the curve so this curve is 10 plus 9x minus x square so under the curve 10 plus 9x minus x square between you can see here in between x equals to for this curve again it is uh, for this curve also uh, yes curve is up to x equal to 10 only so we have to integrate the equation of this curve from x equal to 6 to 10 so from x equals between x equals to 6 and x equals to 10 all right and uh, that means what you can write it is integration for this line is minus 3x plus 46 and it is between 6 to 46 by 3 dx minus and equation of uh, the curve is 10 plus 9x minus x square dx between x equal to 6 and 10 now let's integrate that so now take your calculator and calculate this all right when you calculate this your answer will be 64 square unit you can now stop by here and try the following sums We will now discuss about improper integrals. So you can see when some part or parts of a definite integral becomes infinite. Then these are called improper integrals. So in the improper integrals part, you will see that some integration parts are defined and some are undefined. So let us see which are defined and which are undefined so here in this case if you are given that the integra uh, integration of function like this then let's see what happens here so it is x square and 1 to infinity okay and if you write this is x 1 by x square if you break this reciprocal this is going to be power minus 2 dx okay and after you take the integration it is going to be minus 2 plus 1 by minus 2 plus 1 and then from lower limit 1 to upper limit infinity and after that it is minus thing is here so minus 2 plus 1 is minus so take this outside and this is x to the power minus 1 and 1 to infinity so in fact this is minus 1 by x because x to the power minus 1 is 1 by x and the lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is infinity you can you have seen that here i have continued writing this lower limit and upper limit until i substitute these values in the integrated function okay and now you put that value this is 1 by infinity and then this is minus one time this is infinity another time it is 1 so this is 1 so in place of x there is again 1 so it is 1 and here minus 1 by infinity you know this is 0 and 1 by 1 is 1 so minus time plus minus is plus so this value is 1 so here you can see that the integration is defined all right because we have some specific answer like one here okay now let's see here what happens find the value find the value if it exists of this sort of integration so let's see whether or not it exists so here in question number two our integration is from zero to two and five by x squared dx 
then integrate it this is 5 x to the power minus 2 dx this is 0 to 2 and then we already have that integration done over here so it is eventually it is minus 5 is here so 1 by x 0 to 2 and then this is minus you can write here 1 by 2 minus this is 1 by 0 and it is minus 5 1 by 2 minus infinity and you saw that is equals to infinity so this is undefined all right so in the improper integrals you will see that some of the values are defined and some are not even i am taking here 2 but if you take here infinity then what happens this 1 by infinity will be 0 so this sort will be defined but 1 by 0 will be infinity this will not be defined so in that case you can say that the integration is undefined and therefore the integration of the function does not exist okay uh, in the third question you can see that the diagram shows part of the curve y equals to 20 by 2x plus 5 square and this is the diagram you can see here so in the diagram you can see this is the part of graph for this function and you see, uh, you can just see here at this point it is going near and near to x axis but it never touches it, it will touch in infinity only okay but as these areas are very small area because gap between x axis and this uh, curve line uh, curve path is very small that is very scanty therefore uh, this is possible to add or estimate the area under the curve between x axis and from x equals to 0 to x equals to infinity okay so so that as p tends to infinity that means first of all we integrate the function from x equals to 0 to p and then when p tends to infinity that means when x goes towards infinity then you have to show that the shaded area tends to the value 2 okay so in this case let's see how we can do this so this is not also the different process than we have been doing until now but only the difference is that we are dealing with improper integrals and as you go further towards x-axis the gap between the x-axis and the curve and the curve path is very small okay uh, those are in uh, tenth eleventh maybe hundredth and thousandth place of decimal so these are very small area so this is possible to add the areas up to infinity as well so here you can see so first of all your function is given as y equals to 20 by question number 3 it is given as y equals to 20 by 2x plus 5 square now you have to find the area by integrating so area up to x equals to p okay so you can abbreviate like a p or just leave it like a and then you integrate this function so this is 20 by 2x plus 5 the square dx from x equals to first 0 to p so it is 0 to p so let's start integrating this so it is 20 is taken out and then you have sine of integration from 0 to p and then 1 by 2x plus 5 because you can write 2x plus 5 square then if uh, you break the reciprocal it's going to be minus 2 dx then by applying the general rule that we have learned in the indefinite integrals 
so what we did there that it is 2x plus 5 and its power is 2 plus 1 and then same thing over here in the denominator 2 plus 1 and you can see that the coefficient of x is 2 so it is it also gets divided by 2 and this is between the range of values of x from 0 to p that is the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is p okay <coughs> and then we simplify it little so it will be you can see that 20 is outside here and minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 so this is divided by minus 2 so outside you will see that this is minus 10 and then it is minus 1 so this will be 1 by 2x plus 5 so you can write here 2 times of p plus 5 okay then minus term that we use in calculating the different integrals and then again it is 1 by 2x plus 5 to the power minus 1 means 1 by 2x plus 5 to the power 1 only so 2 times of this is term to put 0 so this is 0 and plus 5 so you have now 10 1 by 2p plus 5 minus 1 by 2 times 0 is 0 and then it is 5 only okay so now question states that as p tends to infinity the shaded area of the shaded region tends to value 2 okay so here as p tends to infinity that means p is going towards infinity that means entire x is going towards infinity in that case you can write now uh, the instead of a p you can write a so it is minus 10 so put in place of p the infinity so 2 times so infinity plus 5 minus 1 by 5 so it is minus 10 again over here and you know this is 2 times to infinity plus 5 is still infinity and this is minus 1 by 5 and minus 10 is here so 1 by infinity is 0 and we are left with minus 1 by 5 so it is minus 10 times of minus 1 by 5 and minus and minus terms become 0 and 5 1 the 5 5 to the 2 so this is 2 a square units and your problem is asking you to show that so therefore this is proof you may again stop by here and then try the following problems where you can see that whether this is defined or not defined not defined means the integration doesn't exist Let's now discuss about how to find volume of the shape by using definite integration method in calculus. So the topic is volume of revolution. That means while finding the volume of revolution, we have two possibilities that we, we rotate this curve about x axis and also we can rotate this about y axis. So first we discuss about rotation of the curve about x axis so for example suppose that this is a curve on the plane on the x y plane and if you rotate about x axis you will have three dimension figure like this okay so here this sort of uh, figure has been developed by rotating this curve y equal to x square about x axis okay now <coughs> we are interested to find volume of this shape between x equals to 2 and x equals to 5 so let's consider for a while one slice inside this inside this three dimension three dimensional figure so let's see what would be the volume of this 
slice over here which is three dimensional slice so here you can see that the height along y-axis you can see that there is some y-coordinate so along the along y-axis you can see that height as y unit and width you can see here width is along x-axis okay so we suppose that this width is very small that is delta x and uh, if you are interested to find volume of this slice you can say that volume equals to area area means area of this circle circular disk times the width of this circular disk okay delta x so area times area is suppose that uh, we have taken one so this is a1 a1 is uh, times delta x is volume of this circular disk or slice you can say okay circular slice so area of a circle is pi r square so in place of r you can see that the, this is y so in this case i am taking y1 so this is pi y1 square delta x so pi y1 square delta x is the volume of this circular disk similarly you can consider other circular disks as well means infinite number of circular disks you can consider in between x equals to 2 and 5 okay so v2 means uh, the circular disks having radius y2 and width delta x so v2 is pi y2 square delta x and similarly we have taken up to n circular disks then n circular disks has volume pi n pi y n square delta x so when you add up volume of each circular disk you will get the total volume of the shape between x equals to 2 and x equals to 5 so here we have done the same thing that total volume is obtained by adding all these volumes so here there is some gap so that it will be perfect replaced by the sign of integration so in this case if i am taking uh, y1 start from y1 then ends to yn so you integrate this function from first value of x from 1 to n okay it is also possible that from 0 to n okay why i am talking x because y contains y equal to x square so this range is range of value of x is for 1 to n so here you can see this is 2 to 5 sometimes it is 0 to n sometimes it is uh, minus 2 to plus infinity it can be okay so as delta x tends to infinity that is delta x is extremely small then volume obtained by rotating this curve about x axis will be given by the integration of this fun uh, integration of pi y square where y equals to x square and that will be the volume of the given set so here in this example v equals to v is from x equals to 2 to 5 if you take but i am taking here 1 to 5 so better you take 2 to 5 okay so from 2 to 5 pi y square so in place of y you have x square so you can write in place of y x square then this is x4 and integration of x4 is x5 by 5 as 5 is constant so i have taken this out of this bracket so it is 2 to 5 so now it is 5 to the power 5 minus 2 to the power 5 okay so then you can take a calculator and you write the answer so it is uh, 5 to the power 5 minus 2 to the power 5 minus 2 to the power 5 and that is going to be 3093 and if you divide this by 5 so it will divide by 5 then 3093 so your answer is here 3093 divided by 5 and times pi unit cube so let's have a look at this example this example is just that find the volume when the shaded region is rotated through 360 degree about 
x-axis. And you can see in this uh, figure it is given that between x equals to 1 and x equals to 2 and the function is this. You do the same procedure, so general formula that we now remember to find the volume is like this and then in place of y we have 4 by 2x minus 1 so we put 4 by 2x minus 1 and simplify it so that it will be in the integrable form and after integration the answer is 16 pi by 3 a square a cubic unit now we talk again about volume of revolution but at this time the rotation about y axis so previously we rotated about x axis and our shape was like this but what happens if you rotate the same curve about y axis okay so when you rotate this about y axis so it will be like this so your shape will be like this and we'll do the same similar thing over here so we have uh, you can consider so many a smaller circular disk and you add up the volume of each, each disk so you know that the volume of, uh, volume of uh, one disk is area of the circle times the width width in this case is previously it was dx but here the radius is x because uh, it is towards x axis but as we are rotating through y axis so width is delta y so delta y is very small number okay so v1 if you say then this is pi instead of so, so pi area is pi r square so pi x1 square if you consider this uh, radius as x1 and then width as delta y so volume of first circular disk in this case is pi x1 square delta y similarly if you consider second then you will have volume for the second circular disk as, as uh, pi x2 square delta y and similarly for nth like this okay and if you have something like zeroth v0 also you can write if you have okay start from 0 then it is pi r square means x0 square and width is always here delta y that is very small number so finally if you add up all this volume then you will have in discrete sense that the volumes total volumes can be obtained by adding all these individual volumes now as delta y tends to 0 the total volume is integration between the value of y equals to 0 and n or maybe a to b or as it is here okay and then instead of pi y square dx we have now pi x square dx so this is so therefore in general you can say volume of the given shape given curve when rotated about y axis is pi x square dy all right so in this case the function is y equal to x square so integrate this function between x equals to 2 and this that means we are interested to find these many volumes only not entire volume okay so uh, these many volume is uh, from 2 to 5 only okay so the formula is that volume equals to pi In general, so volume formula in this case is volume equals to integration from 2 to 5 pi x square dy. Okay, not y square dx in this case. So, since in place of x square there is already y, so we write here y and then this is dy and pi will be here. Alright, pi will be here. So integration of y is y square by 2, okay, and then you are taking the integration between x equals to 5 and x, uh, y equals to 5 and y equals to 2. Now put this upper limit first and then lower limit, okay, then you will have the answer as 21 pi by 2 or 10 whole 1 by 2 pi is a cubic unit. So lastly, let's see this example. Find the volume obtained when the shaded region, that means this shaded region, is rotated through 360 degrees above the y-axis. Okay. So y equals to, uh, you know that in order to find the volume, our formula is 
pi x squared dy but it is given in terms of y equals to f in, 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 y is given in terms of x so you have to break this and then you have to convert that x in terms of y so when you convert this you're squaring both sides then 2x and then uh, if you transpose 2 this to the other side which is 1 by 2y square minus 1 then this is x squared so that means you square to the both side because you need x square terms here so when you're squaring you have 1 by 4 y square minus 1 by whole square and if you expand it it is 1 by 4 times y by 4 y to the power 4 minus 2x square plus 1 okay so by using this formula now so in place of x square you can put this function now so this all are in y in terms of y now so after integration you can see that integration of y4 is y5 by 5 and y square is y cube by 3 and 1 has integration y between the value of y 1 2 3 okay now put all these values like we did earlier and then your final answer is 8 whole 4 by 15 pi a square unit so these two terms and also you can express your answer like 1 by 20, 124 pi by 15 cubic unit so these two answers you can see these are the exact value but uh, it is possible to write in non-exact answer also so here i am taking that up to three decimal places or four significant figure answer so it depends that whether you have to find the exact answer or the answer correct to the given significant figure or decimal place so lastly you can try the following sums where it includes to find volume by rotating the given curve about x-axis as well as about y-axis okay and if you have developed these two knowledge uh, these two knowledge then you can test your knowledge in question number three where i have given some hint also so pause it here if you like so at this point you can stop by and do this sums as your classwork okay guys once you have done all these tasks that we discussed here in this class then I am sure you are able to do almost all sums from definite integral in your paper 1 book. So this is all for now and thank you for your patience.